Ah, oh, geez, this one's going to upset a lot of people. So I'm tired of being thrown around and being told that LDL causes heart disease. Let me rephrase that, actually. I'm tired of attention being placed solely on LDL and not other contributing factors of arterial calcification and heart disease. When I made the last video, Ansel Keys, The Boy Who Cried Butter, I made a huge mistake, and I should have led with this. I should have led with the fact that 75% of people who have heart attacks don't have dangerously high levels of LDL. What? You heard that right. 75% of people who have heart attacks do not have high levels of LDL. We can read about it in this Harvard article from 2020. But actually, here it is in January of 2009. And again, January of 2009. If Ansel Keys saw this, he'd be rolling in his grave. What's weirder is that it doesn't seem like anyone's talking about this. I somehow have never heard anyone mention this, and I stumbled on it while doing research for the first video. Have you seen this study before? Does it surprise you that 75% of people who have heart attacks don't have high LDL? Because it should. Right now, you might be asking yourself, wait, 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 hold on. If 75% of people who have heart attacks don't have high LDL, then what's causing their heart attacks? The answer is, it's complicated. The good news is that recent research by Matt Budoff, David Feldman, and Nick Noritz offers some insight about what else might be going on with LDL and heart disease. And before we start, I just wanted to let you know that I'm just a normal person trying to figure stuff out, I'm never giving advice of any kind, and I hope you will find the information in this video helpful. The algorithm's been a bit of a struggle these days, so if you could hit that like button, I'd really appreciate it. In their lean mass hyperresponder study, Budoff points out that both in the lean mass hyperresponder group and the control group, LDL and arterial plaque, that's plaque buildup in your arteries, don't have any relationship. The LDL versus the plaque score, so this is increasing LDL. These are the LDL values of the patients, and here's the plaque that we saw in the lean mass hyperresponders. There was no relationship. If you're not familiar with what a lean mass hyperresponder is, check out my video linked above. Now, this is a small study, but it does span about five years, and they're doing a follow-up a year after the initial data was collected. But in both the lean mass hyperresponder group and the control group, there was no correlation between LDL level and the level of arterial calcification in the participants. Budoff goes on to explain that people with poor metabolic health and existing disease still need treatment and could potentially benefit from statins or decreasing their LDL. So poor metabolic health and or existing disease will still need treatment. If you watch this whole presentation, you'll learn that Budoff thinks that LDL is a modifiable factor related to cardiovascular disease that's particularly worrisome in conjunction with poor metabolic health and other conditions like diabetes. One of the most interesting things he says in this presentation is that not everyone with high LDL develops heart disease. Even patients with familial hypercholesterolemia who are born with extremely high levels of LDL and are also more prone to developing heart disease. Towards the end, Budoff makes another statement that we should pay attention to. So I still believe that if you have heart disease, coronary artery disease, LDL is a target to reduce, not to say that it's the cause of the heart disease. If we think about these statements from Budoff, an expert in early detection of arterial plaque and heart disease, in addition to the fact that 75% of patients who have heart attacks have normal or even low LDL levels, we'll quickly realize that there's more to the situation than LDL alone. We'll have to ask ourselves, why is there so much attention being put on LDL when there are other causes that we should be worried about? But I'm just here to present the information. What do you think? If you learned something new or found this video informative, please give it a like, share it with someone who might need it, and consider subscribing to continue being part of the conversation. Are you surprised by the 2009 finding about heart attacks and high LDL levels? How do you think Ansel Keys would react if he knew about this information today? Do you think that we should avoid eating saturated fat or that we should worry about our LDL levels if our metabolic health and health in general is doing pretty well? Let me know in the comments below. I've linked the full presentation with Matt Budoff in the description. I highly recommend checking it out. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.